children well praise god praise god everybody praise the lord god is good we're here for another weekly bible study he bless us to come this far amen and uh so thankful well i love your hair sister jerry <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> God bless I you. don't, but this this is my new life. <laughs> oh, hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're just going to start off in prayer, and then we're going to uh, go on from there. It is seven o'clock. I try to try to start on time. Uh, amen. Gracious amen. and most heavenly Father, God, we thank you. We thank you, dear God, for uh, blessing us to see another Tuesday, another week. God, bless us now as we study thy word. Oh, God, bless it that we may get an understanding of your word together, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, so happy to see my good friend from high school, Brother Tony Carr on Facebook. God bless you, man. Good to see you joining us today. Uh, we are on actually on page 174 of our book, we're moving right along. Um, and we wanted to just look at uh, a few sets of scripture. Starting off on tonight, it asks us to uh, read the following scriptures and circle the word, word wait. The first scripture is Psalms five and three. And it says, in the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice in the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. Psalms 33 and 20 says, we wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Um, Psalms 37 and 34 says, wait for the Lord and keep his way. He will exalt you to inherit the land. Um, Psalms 38 and 15 says, I wait for you, O Lord, you will answer, O Lord, my God. 
And finally, one of my favorites, Isaiah 40 and 31 says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. Uh, and the question is asked, why do you think you should wait until you have heard a word? So um, we talked the last few weeks about giving God total surrender, having patience. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why the Bible over and over again tells us to wait, particularly in some, because wait, it, waiting is a part of faith. Amen. Uh, because as you wait, you are to have faith or you are to entrust that in waiting, the Lord is yet with you. Um, and so, uh, you know, some people think that waiting doesn't have a purpose, but it actually does. Uh, you know, let's look at this last scripture that says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Uh, so that alone is telling us that as you're waiting, your strength, your faith becomes renewed or, uh, yeah. or you become re reinvigorated in your strength because sometimes we need to wait in order for the lord to uh the holy spirit to saturate itself within our own spirit amen, mm -hmm. um, amen. Because we, we, we rush to a harsh decision or we rush to a harsh move we have not all the time checked with god uh i want to look at um the book of matthew the seventh chapter uh, Matthew, the seventh chapter. And again, Jesus is training his disciples in the uh, book of Matthew here. And uh, we want to look at the seventh chapter of St. Matthew. And we'll go back here, Matthew 7, Matthew 7. Seven chapter. Yes, seventh chapter of St. Matthew. And I want to read the seventh verse. So Matthew 7 is 7. Says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find not and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, or what man is there of you whom, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts, unto your children, how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Therefore all things whatsoever ye would would that men should do for you, to you, do ye, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Okay, here Jesus is talking about being expected that God will bless you with what you ask for, not, not only to be expected, but that what you ask is good, coming that, of that that which cometh from God is good. It's a good thing. And I, I reiterate that tonight because sometimes we get stuff and it's not always so good to us, but it's good to God. And it's meant, it's meant for us to receive what the Lord gave us. Now, you might say, why do you say that, Pastor? Look at <clears throat> verse 11. Verse 11 says, if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask? So mm -hmm. in other words, the expected thing from God should be that it is good. Hallelujah. Um, um, and, and not that 
we should not, I know it sounds trivial, but you'd be surprised who expects that what happens, the evil things that happen to them or the bad things come from God. Um, um, you know, uh, if you think about your, um, some of the happenings that you had in life and some of the things you've prayed for, and if they happen adversely, a lot of people, old folks, you say, well, maybe you weren't meant to have it. That's why God gave it to you the way that you did. And mm -hmm. then for some people that are baby Christians, baby Christians can, uh, can give up on God, can give up yeah. on their faith. Yes. Say stuff like that. Amen. But the issue remains that we must always have total dependence on God. All right. Um, the author says, you may think of waiting as a passive, inactive time. Waiting on the Lord is anything but inactivity. Hallelujah. I'll say that again. Waiting on God is anything but inactivity. Uh, mm -hmm. We can go back to the, the scripture that we said earlier, Isaiah 40 and 31. There's something going on while you're waiting. The Lord is at work while you're waiting. Don't you dare think that God is not moving as you as you wait, or as you as 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 in your view, He is silent. Mm -hmm. Even if we think God is silent, God is moving. God is making a way. God is increasing our faith because as we wait, our faith should increase. Okay, questions, comments on that. I'm going a little fast tonight. Question, comments on that. Okay, I was going back to, uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, my brother on Facebook says, the Lord speaks of praying amiss. Yes, yes. We have to pray <coughs> while we're waiting. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yes, and we have to continue to serve and continue to believe. Um, oh, I was going back to Isaiah 40 and 31, which says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Not only is Isaiah talking about us being patient, but Isaiah is also talking about us being able to withstand the weight. Because sometimes as we wait, we become weak. Yes. Or we become impatient. Tired. Yeah. yeah, our impatience sometimes can cause exhaustion. All right. Um, 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 but we have to know that patience and waiting really should strengthen our, mm -hmm. strengthen our belief, strengthen our continuance of, of trusting him and believing in him. All right. Uh y'all see my bad deodorant. I had to get my bad deodorant. <laughs> uh, any any questions, comments on that? Okay, the, the author says, when God gives you specific guidance, he will do more through you in days and weeks than you could ever accomplish in years of labor on your own. Y'all, we have to trust that God can do it. We, too often times, we try to put us in what it is that we're asking God for you will discover that once you take your hands off of it and let God work, God will answer your prayer. God will, God will surely um, um, uh, do what you ask him to do. But sometimes we got to take us out of it. Mm -hmm. With us being in it, it makes it exhausting. That alone can make the task exhausting. Yes. Okay. Um, it, the author says the Holy Spirit will never misunderstand the Father's will for your life. The Father has a purpose to work through your life, and he, put, he places his spirit in you so you don't miss it. The Spirit's job is to guide you according to the Father's will. Then he enables you to do God's will. You are completely dependent on God for the knowledge and ability to accomplish his purposes. That is why your relation with him is crucial. 
That is why you need to wait until you have heard a word from him about his purposes and ways. Jesus is your example of one who never failed to know and do his father's will. Now, now, now we must keep in mind, and I think sometimes we forget that Jesus didn't operate on his own. Right. But he operated on, on, according to the father's will, until his father's mm -hmm. will. As a matter of fact, he, he continues to repeat that, that uh, he quote, unquote, he quote, is about his father's business. When he says that over and over again in the New Testament, he's saying that I move according to the, the Lord's will. We cannot move. We have to be patient and wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, um, that is why, oh, before I say that, let me let me go into more of what the author says here. Um, he's talking about Jesus. He said he was always rightly related to the Father. If you walk in a constant relationship with God's provision for you, the provision of his son, his Holy Spirit, and his own presence in your life, then you should never come to a time when you do not know God's will. And y'all, this is, this is um, truthfully the point of experiencing God. And that is to be in tune with your walk, your closeness to God as being attentive to God's voice, God's direction, God's guidance, uh, the Holy Spirit, being able to recognize all of this and to adjust your life to it. So, so having a deeper relationship with God hopefully gets you to be more in tuned with what the Lord is doing with you in and all around your life. Questions, comments on that? Let's look at the gospel according to St. Mark. Uh, the gospel according to St. Mark. Uh, chapter 11. Amen. Amen. Brother Tony says, waiting on the Lord is like going into a restaurant and the Lord is the a patron, a customer, and what he asks, we are his server, a waiter. We should bring to the Lord and after it. And while serving, he gives us our reward. Remember the Lord says, if his word abide in us, we in him, then we may ask what we will, and he will give it us, that the Father will be glorified to the Son after we are attentive to his will and word. Amen. Amen, Tony. The problem, though, consists that we're not patient. We are not patient on, a lot of us stay on our knees for a little while, sometimes years, and if it don't come, we get off our knees or stop praying for it or do as the old folks say, well, um, the Lord may not have that for you to have. And so we stop praying. Sometimes stop believing. I want to really encourage you tonight that you lean and be more attuned to what you believe God is saying through you, even in the prayer that you're making right now. In, in your current means of waiting, what is the Lord saying to you while you wait, while you pray? All right, uh, I want to get to the scripture. Mark 11. And uh, yes, yes, yes. Verse 23. Mark 11, verse 23. Mark 11, verse 23 says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. So, so Jesus is telling the disciples, 
to pray with expectation. Mm -hmm. Believe as though you've already received it. Whatever it is that you ask in your Lord, uh, to the Lord, fixate it in your heart and mind that he didn't already gave it to you. The victory is on the horizon. Because when you do that, you are praying in faith. We have to pray in faith, not pray in fear. We have to pray in faith, not pray timidly. Well, Lord, if, if I think I should have this, I think I should do this. No, Jesus is empowering the disciples to act within their own faith and believe. In other words, he's saying that when you talk to God, believe. We've got to believe when we talk to God. I know that sounds silly, but, but God has empowered us through the Holy Spirit to have faith and power to know not only that he exists, but he will do just what he said he will do. And that is of the same essence that we must pray, that we must believe, all right? Um, the author says here, when our church, he's talking about his church that he passed, received the directive from God, I often experience a crisis in my prayer life. I learned more about prayer at those times than at almost any other time. Only prayer could bring about certain things. And God often waits to act until we ask. The crisis was this. Was I willing to pray until God brought it about? Has Mark eleven twenty four 24 has challenged me about the relationship of faith and prayer. So y'all, faith and prayer go hand in hand. And the reason I'm saying that is because, as I said earlier, some of us pray, but we don't pray believing. We're just praying. We're just saying words. But 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 Jesus just got finished telling the disciples that in your praying, you must pray with expectation. The author says um, about Mark 11 and 24, this verse is sometimes used to teach a name it or claim it theology. You decide what you want. You name that in your request and claim it, and it's yours. That is a self-centered theology. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to go over that again. The author says, and I know preachers that preach this message, and it's absolutely false. When we say, uh, name it, claim it, mm -hmm. I want a pink Cadillac. I'm going to ask God for it and get it. That's being selfish. That's being selfish. Okay? Or, or I saw this house and I'm going to claim it. It's mine. What we should be praying is our focus should be on God's will for us mm -hmm. to have. Yes. Not what, not I, 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 I. It's not so much saying something differently, but it's incorporating more of what God wants for your life, not what you want. Because again, that goes back to what we talked about several months ago, because when we put us in something, that's being self-centered. And I and God is calling us to be more God-centered. Mm -hmm. Questions, comments on that? I like he says, the author says, when God encounters you, you face a crisis of belief that may require major adjustments in your life. Mm -hmm. You need to learn how to pray. However, realize that prayer will be exceedingly costly to you. God may wake you up in the middle of the night to pray. Amen. Times may come when you pray into the night or even all night. Becoming a person of prayer will require a major adjustment of your life in God. Okay? And I will put it as simple as this. Sometimes, y'all, we need to switch up our prayer. We need to switch up how we go to God seeking his face. Have you fasted? Have you prayed and fast? Have you fasted and prayed? 
Have you are you saying the same thing? You know, I I I can't I can't say the same prayer I said it at five years old that I'm uh, that I'm I should be saying at forty seven. I can't say now. Nah, lay me down to sleep. I pray, the Lord, my soul to keep, and expect that to be the only thing that I pray. I'm thankful for it, and I might say it, but now I would say it incorporating what I believe. Because, because, and I thank my um, my parents for that. The now I lay me down to sleep. I pray, the Lord, my soul to keep. That my parents taught all four of us of my siblings that prayer to basically tell us that before you go to bed or before you eat, focus on God. That was to train us to have a general focus on the Lord on what God provided. Mm -hmm. But now that I know better, I'm going to say some more prayer to go along with that belief. Question, comments on that? Amen. And I encourage y'all to pray more often. If you are not receiving what you ask the Lord for, if you are not, if, if 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 what you pray for ain't happening, um, y'all excuse me. If what you pray for ain't happening, then um, you sometimes need to switch up the prayer. Any questions, comments on that? No questions, no comments. Well, 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 I'll make. I'll just say what you're saying about uh, waiting on the Lord. You pray and uh, you wait, but you continue to do as much. I think someplace in this lesson it says, "Continue doing what the Lord told you last to do. Continue working on your last assignment or activity." until right. at, while you wait for this to come about. And right. uh, when it does come about, uh, you have to be very thankful for it. Whether it's a little thing or a big thing, you have right. to say, thank you, Lord, and recognize Amen. that. Um, and, and it's always in the Lord's will, like you say, mm -hmm. because some things are, you know, yes. it could be yeah. even, even if you are praying for a car or something, well, you don't know if that car could be a detriment. It, you don't know if you could right. get in it and have an accident, but right. you need to know it, in the Lord's will, uh, if it's your will, I'm thinking this is what I want, if it's your right. will. Mm -hmm. it, it, we have to be careful not to make too much selfish prayers. Right. Sometimes our prayers are too selfish. Right. We don't incorporate God at all. Right. If you need shelter, just ask for shelter. You don't have to ask for the biggest house on the block. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, if the Lord bless you with that. Oh, yeah. Take it and run. Yeah. And that goes <laughs> in accordance to you saying in your prayer, God, if it be thine will. Because it yeah. may be in his will for you to have a five, six bedroom house with 75 toilets. But it, yeah. may, not, it may be in his will for you to have a two room shack. Right. <laughs> but I, I'll invite you guys over regardless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I like he says here. Uh, okay. So, yeah. So, yeah. Another cost will come as you try to guide the people around you to pray. Many churches have not, have never learned how to pray. The greatest untapped resource is the prayer of God's people. Helping your church becoming a praying church will be a rewarding experience. But prayer will be costly. Every church needs to be a praying church. And that's the one thing I've always said about Christ Center is that we've always been a praying church. Well, since I've been there, it seemingly I, one thing that I've appreciated about the church is that I know you all are praying and you all are a praying church. And I've just come to discover that when a corporate body is praying, you know that they are praying. Mm -hmm. The Lord will move mightily because yeah. as the word says, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if a corporate amount of people are 
in trusting that God will do what he says, the Lord moves. Yes. Um, question, comments on that. So one of the main summaries that um, that comes up here, it says, obedience requires total, total dependence on God. Yes. If we want God to stir us, uh, uh, if we want God to use us, we have to be totally dependent and entrustworthy upon him. What's yeah. comments on that? All right. Um, let's see here. So now we're about to talk more about obedience, okay? Um, I want to look at uh, John, John the 14th chapter. Uh, John the 14th chapter. So happy to see Miss Stacy tonight. God bless you, Sister Stacy. Uh, John the 14th chapter. <laughs> so happy to see your face, girl. Uh, let's see. Yeah, God bless you. Uh, Reverend uh, Brother Tony said he has to leave. He's at work but enjoys the study. God bless you for watching with us on Facebook. Uh, John 11. John, uh, John 14, I'm sorry. 14. John 14. And I want to read uh, verse 15. Actually, it's, it's, I want to read a few parts of this scripture. Let's start at verse 1. John 14, verse 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. I want to skip over to verse 15. I'm still in John 14. I want to skip over to 15. It says, if ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. He's talking about the Holy Spirit, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I want to skip down to um, 23. 23 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not me not keep is not my sayings, that the word which ye hear is not mine, but the father's which sent me. In this scripture, Jesus is talking about preparation. He's talking about an invitation. He's talking about obedience. Because he says, First of all, he starts off by saying that I've already prepared a place for you. Mm -hmm. That if you keep what I ask of you, if you keep what I'm saying, uh, when you leave this earthly house, you will be in a, in a, in a house of mansions, in a heavenly house. Yes. He also says that out of obedience and even knowing this, even, you know, we have to have faith to know that when we die, we're going to somewhere better. And he says, even as we come to know this, his command to us is that we remain in obedience to what he says, or we, we remain hand in hand in relationship with God, in a deep relationship with God, that we abide in him, that we trust him, that we love him, all right? Um, um, but the... the the bottom line of all of this, in order to trust love, is to formally obey. Okay? Um, the author says here, um, the author says God has always been at work in our world. He is now at work where you are. God always takes the initiative 
to come to you and reveal what he is doing or what he is about to do. When he does, this will be his invitation for you to join him in his activity. Joining him will require you to make major adjustments in your life. So he will accomplish his will through you. When you know what God has said and what he is about to do, and when you have adjusted your life to him, there is yet one remaining response to God that is necessary. To experience God at work in and through you, you must obey him, okay? Um, when you obey him, he will accomplish his work through you, and you will come to know him by experience. I want to skip down to what he says. Um, in another unit, you studied the relationship between love and obedience. You learned that obedience is the outward expression of, of your love for God, okay? Uh, obedience is the outward expression of love for your God. The reward for obedience and love is that God will reveal himself to you. If you have an obedience problem, you have a love problem. God mm -hmm. is love. His will is always best. God is all-knowing. His directions are always right. God is all-powerful. He can enable you to do his will. If you love God, you will obey him, okay? Now, I know this sounds trivial. I know this sounds familiar. I know we, um, we preach about this in church, but if the key to being blessed is to obey God and and if we know God as being good, as we read earlier tonight, as true, then we will have no problems obeying him and being stirred and guided by God. Some people, some people have a tough time. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Some people have a tough time being guided by their own faith, their own belief. No, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Uh, no, 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 no. I know, and I know. I have a cousin, and I'm sure he ain't watching. I'm finna talk about my cousin right now, my baby <laughs> cousin. We three, we we three years apart. I love him to death. We were probably the closest cousins growing up. I love him to death, y'all. But he suffers a lot from a crisis of belief. So his son goes to goes to the school opposite of where my daughter goes to school. Okay. His son is a freshman, my daughter's a sophomore, and their schools are like within a mile apart. And so when this hurricane and stuff was going on, he was constantly calling me. Hey man, what you gonna do? Are you gonna fly your daughter home? I'm finna go get him. And you know, he was cussing and everything. I, it's one of them, them kind of cussing, okay? And so ultimately, <laughs> when it got real bad, <laughs> I'm laughing because- Lord have right mercy. He, I get, when it got real bad, he called me. It was his last call to me. And he said, hey, man, you know, me and you both grew up in the church. And I know about faith and prayer and all that. But I'm finna go get my child. I'm in this road right now. <laughs> and, I'm, and I couldn't do nothing but start cracking up laughing. And, 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 and the reason I'm telling y'all that story is because when we have, all of us know that we have faith. You know, it's just like what I preach Sunday. We, we always, we have this faith, but then there's the human side of us wow. that's timid in our own faith. The mm -hmm. man, the man told Jesus, <laughs> uh, for those that was at church on Sunday, the man told Jesus, I have faith, but help my unbelief. Yeah. Help the part of me that suffers from mm -hmm. not believing. Mm -hmm. Even if I it's claims to have faith. So my cousin was telling me, you know, yeah, faith is good and all that, man. But I'm to me, his version of common sense was was being closer to what he knew to do versus mm -hmm. what God knew. Right. I'm constantly telling him, man, it's gonna be all right. The Lord got our kids. You know, I'm not really worried. It's gonna work out. He, man, forget all that. I'm getting ready to hit this road. And, and, and these two different types of personalities are true, particularly with Black folks, of the human. We have this part of us that cannot solely depend on God because we trust more of us than God. 
Hallelujah today. And so it's hard for a lot of people, not to say any of y'all got this problem, but it's hard for a lot of people to give total 150% trust in God. But that's what God wants from us. Yes. God wants us to give the 150, 175% total surrender yeah. unto him. And he has given us reason to know that we can. Some people, I'm honestly, truthfully, honest to God, have had people tell me that, that you know, um, I understand you're a person of faith, you believe in all that, but shoot, I, you know, this ain't looking too good. You know? <laughs> and, 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 and my rebuttal to them is always, do you trust God? Do you trust him? Do you know God to have failed you? And if he failed you, was it from God? Yeah. Oftentimes, who thank you, Holy Ghost. Oftentimes, we take our defeats, our hurts, our disappointments, our trials, and it cause it to, to lessen our faith and blame God for it. Mm -hmm. And it lessens our faith in God because we've been defeated. But what, what the author is saying tonight and what I'm telling each of you, if you want to grow in your experience with God, you must try and make the attempt to give him total dependence, Amen. total trust, total obedience, total submission, lay it at his feet. God, Amen. I trust you with this. It's going to be all right. I'm going to move on. Now, I'm not talking about nobody because it's nothing wrong. It's human for us to have doubt. Right. It's human for us to worry. It's right, but pastor. To, to be scared. Go ahead, pastor, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, sometimes uh, we don't, we act, and it could be the spirit that's moving us to act, but we don't recognize that it is the spirit because we have a habit of saying something told me. Well, what was that something? Right. Oh, that's the spirit. Yes. Yes. You no, know, yes. it could it could have been, but he may not be at the point where he could recognize the Lord saying, "Look, you're close enough. You can get there and back." Right. But right. he wasn't in that frame of mind. But it could be that that something he didn't recognize. Right. 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 And 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 to be honest with you, spiritually, me and him are different. We grew up in the same family, you mm -hmm. know, but we, spiritually we're different. Not everybody is, is spiritually mature. And I love my cousin, Dev, I'm not talking about mm -hmm. him. But not everybody is spiritually mature enough to even have sense enough to, to pray to the, Lord, to the Lord to ask for patience. Ask, Lord, give me patience. Give mm -hmm. me a, a sense of knowing that my child is okay. You mm -hmm. know, um, 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 God help me Help me my unbelief. I'm telling you, that scripture blesses me every time I read it. Because it's so real that all of us say we have faith, but there's a little bit part of us that prevents us from totally trusting God. I want to get back to the author here real quick. Um, the author says, uh, uh, Jesus said someone who has an intimate relationship with him is the one who does the will of the Heavenly Father. That comes from Matthew 12 and 15. Jesus clearly indicated a person's obedience reveals his or her or her love relationship with God. And that was in what we just got finished reading. Okay. When we, the closer we are to God, the more that we ought to love him. And as we get close to the Lord, we obey him. We trust mm -hmm. him. We have faith in him. Um, the author said James in his letter to believe is strongly emphasized that faith does not result in actions is dead, okay? That's that old scripture, faith without works is dead. When the disciples obeyed Jesus, they saw, experienced God's mighty power working in and around them. When they did not act in faith or, and do his will, they did not experience God's power. In many ways, obedience is your moment of truth. What you do re reveal what you believe about God. Determine whether you will experience his mighty work in you and through you. Decide whether you will come to know him more intimately. Okay, so so 
So what the author is trying to say here is that if you come to more intimately, it's just like your spouse, significant other, girlfriend, boyfriend, or whatever. Um, can I get a witness that as you came to love, that as you love them, as you become more intimate with them, and not necessarily sex, I mean, we all adults on here, but not necessarily in a sexual relationship, just mm -hmm. in a caring relationship. As you became more caring of that person, um, you became more trusting of them. Mm -hmm. You became more um, 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 in tune with them that in some cases, your spirit, y'all, y'all are one. That's yeah. what makes y'all one. You know, whenever I counsel couples before I marry them, that's like one of my main topics of, of, of discussion is that the two of y'all got to be one. You're intimately, when you, when you, uh, well, that's a whole nother Bible study, but when you become intimate, when you be, the closeness of you should make you one. Mm -hmm. And that power of being one allows you to grow in God in the one vessel, okay? And if, if you are not one, chances are you're not going to make it. And one going one direction, the other going in one direction, both physically, psychologically, and spiritually, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. Because, because ultimately... The chemistry should be where intimately you are in closeness with one another. And it's the same thing with God, y'all. As you experience God intimately, as you grow closer to him, you will discover, I'm a witness, that he will work more in your life than ever yes. before. Yes. That, that, that when you, because when you become intimate, more intimate, just like your spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, or whatever, you become more trusting of that person. Your relationship grows. You become more active. Y'all become, as y'all become closer, uh, it's like fine wine. It just kindles uh, great spirits. Hallelujah. And it's the same thing with God. Oh, I know hallelujah. where, I I know where near myself. the relationship I was with the Lord when I was 19 as I am at 47. Amen. Because I've grown closer to him. Yes, I've had yes. more experience with him. I've, 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 I've had more testimony of knowing that he is a rock in a weary land. Okay, I really want to get through this here. Um, the author says, when you come to a moment of truth, when you must choose whether to obey God, you will not obey him unless you believe him. And we talked about that over and over again. Today. Oh, yeah. He cannot trust, you cannot trust him unless you love him. You have to love the Lord, okay, in order to uh, uh, trust him. Trust him. Um, the author says on the next page, if you know God's love, you should never question a directive from him. It will always be right and best, okay? And that goes back to the way we started tonight. Because when we started the scripture, we started at tonight. It says what comes from God is good. Mm -hmm. However it is, y'all, it don't necessarily have to be good in our sight or in our view, but, 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 but it's good in God's view. And we have to <clears> trust <throat> that it's still good. Woo! Sometimes, sometimes, and I'm a witness, I've experienced this. We have stuff happen to us. And it, it don't feel so good to us. But it was God's will for our life. And in the end, we ought to say that we need to trust that it come from God and that it is good. But it takes us trusting the Lord to come to realize that for ourselves. Questions, comments on that? I had a comment. Okay, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Um, you know, I was w watching this um, Sarah Jakes Roberts um, sermon, and she talked about trusting God in this too, because we can trust God in certain things, but those hard things, like maybe, yeah. you know, a hurricane, yeah. <laughs> you might say, I, I don't know. And so I think it's that this, this too, it's easy to say, well, I trust you 
and you know right. that you're going to keep you know my child safe but maybe I don't trust you in regards to my own health or I don't right. trust you in regard you know so just really learning how to say I trust him in all things mm. um to help me in all areas because that's that true to me that true obedience it's easy right. to say I trust yeah. you in the things that I'm comfortable with versus the things that I'm uncomfortable with right right yeah thank you Stacy it's easy to love God in the good times but do you trust him in the bad time? Let's look at Psalms 23. Psalms 23 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The psalmist admitted the fact that the valley is not always going to be good. It's in the background of death. And to be honest with y'all, and, and I've preached this in a funeral once, we all know that the end of us is death. So we're actually walking in the valley of the shadow of death. Well, God might call us on tonight. I hope he don't. But Lord, I got some more time. He may call us on today. But we must trust that even as we walk through, he's with us. Mm -hmm. And so and thank you for that point, Stacey. We have got to trust that even in the bad times, or even as we walk through the bad times, we must be able to trust, Lord, you are taking me through this time. It, we're so quick to give the devil credit. We're so quick all to say, well, well it's, it's messed up, so it must be the devil. No, it could be that this was God's will for you at this particular point in time. Any other observations, questions? All right, I really want to get to this, this last part that the author said. Um, the author said, oh, okay, okay. God blesses those who obey him. The benefits of obedience are beyond our imagination, but they include being God's people, having a solid foundation when the storms of life, just like Stacy got finished telling us, come against you and knowing spiritual truth. Rebellion against God is the opposite of obedience. Disobedience is a serious rejection of God's will. De Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68 names some cause of disobedience. And that's when um, God was kindled with the children of Israel. But, but, but let me just say this. Obedience is the foundation of belief. It is because we believe that we obey. And as the author just got finished saying, as Stacy said earlier, that is our foundation as we walk through the storms of life, the tough times the good, the bad. We've got to be able to stand steadfast with God, the same we was when everything was loxydaisal, wonderful, and same time when everything is hell in the handbasket. I'm just being real with y'all. If you, you, you have got to be able to stand with the Lord when, when, when things are going haywire in your life. And the reason that you can and you will is because you know him for yourself. I know him to be a healer. I know him to be a way maker. I know him to get me out of this mess. I know him that I, you know what? Let me, let me tell y'all something. I'm gonna test. I think y'all heard me tell this story before. There was a time in my life where I was like really super low. I was like low, 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 low. I was staying in my mama house. And um, this was years ago. And I told my mama, I remember, and mama will recall me this story. I was like, this is like one day I was just like low. <laughs> and I told my mama, I said, mama, this is going on. That's going on. And then this happened. And I said, but you know what, mama? I know the Lord is still with me. I know God is still in control. And I'm telling y'all that story because oftentimes, we think that because things are happening to us that are going haywire, that God is not in the midst of that. But if he wasn't, he would not be God. He would not be God. But we can stand tall in the grief of it all with our foundation of being obedient and loving of him. Because if you love him, you trust him. If you obey him, you have faith in him. And you can because he is good. Questions, comments on that? 
observation. <laughs> so happy to see Reverend DeAndre on Facebook. God bless you, brother. All right. Any final thoughts? We're going to uh, pick up there on uh, next week. Uh, uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. On page 183, which is day two of unit nine. We're going on through this book. Uh, we're going to pick up on page 183 on next week. Let us continue to keep everyone in prayer um, and, uh, and, and do as the Father wills us to do. Uh, let us prepare our minds and our hearts and thoughts. Let us look to the Lord at this time. Our God and our Father, God, we come and we thank you, oh God. We thank you for this lesson. We thank you, Lord, for those that have gathered. Um, God, I come here praying, Lord, for all those that are calling witness to this prayer right now. I pray, oh God, that you would move mightily in the lives of the people of faith, the people that know who you are, oh God, in the gathering of the saints. God, we need you, oh God. We're yeah. nothing without you. God, yeah. I feel sometimes we just need to be reminded that at the end yeah. of the day, we're nothing without you, oh God. And we need thee, oh God, we need thee. We need you today. Yeah. We need yeah. you in our lives. Yeah. We need you, oh God, for health and strength. We need you in our finances, oh God. Yeah. God, we need you amongst our children and our families. Yeah. Lord, yeah. bless now in the name of yeah. Jesus. Yeah. God. I come here praying for every name that's on the, the prayer list tonight. Yeah. I pray for uh, Brother Tony Dansbury, oh God, right now, God, give him strength tonight, God, is standing in need of prayer, God, looking uh, towards you for guidance, oh Lord, for, for, for leadership, for strength, God, bless him in a mighty way, God, I pray for every person that's standing in need right now, some need you to go further, oh God, some is going to the doctor on tomorrow, Lord, and they need you for good report, oh God. Bless them mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. mighty name of Jesus, Lord. I pray, oh God. Oh God, I pray for everybody that we came in contact with today and tomorrow, Lord. Let your light so shine amongst men and women, oh God, that they may see the Jesus within us, Lord, to want to be different, to want to change, oh God, to want to be converted, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, I thank you for the testimony that you've given all of us, oh God. And I just pray that you just continue to provide, continue to be a, a provider, Lord. Continue to be a healer, oh God. Continue to be uh, help us to be obedient, God. Anything that we've done that's not <clears throat> like you, Lord, forgive us, Lord, right now. Forgive us of our sins, our trespasses, oh God. Forgive us of our evil thoughts amongst men yeah. and women, yeah. Lord. Lord, let us leave all of those things behind us, oh God, yeah. and let us press forward. God, somebody needs to be able to press forward on tonight. Yeah. God, I pray, oh God, that you help us to press on yeah. and press forward. Oh God, to press stronger and better like yeah. never before. God, let tomorrow be better than today. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lord, let next week be, be better. Oh God, let victory come. Oh God, Lord, we're praying, expecting you to move, praying, expecting yeah. a blessing, praying, expecting victory. Oh God, help us, Lord Jesus, on tonight. God, somebody stand in the need of a prayer. It's me. Yeah. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer, God. Lord, help us all to humble ourselves and to call on you, oh God. Lord, in the need, in the mighty need, Lord, that we have, help us to be able to know that you supply the need, oh God. Give us the need, Lord. Help us in the name of Jesus, Lord. Touch us, oh God. I pray for your hand to come, Lord. And Heal us, oh God, in the yeah. name of Jesus, Lord. Strengthen us, oh God. Lord, reprobate our mind tonight, oh God. Wherever our mind may be lacking in, God, bless our mind to want to do and act right, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Some of us need grace and mercy, oh God. Some mm -hmm. of us need a mighty move from you, Lord, right now, like never before, God. Somebody needs to hear from you. Somebody needs to come to know you better. Somebody want to be deeper in their relationship with you. Somebody want to be more intimate, oh God. Bless God in the name of Jesus on tonight. God, I pray for brighter days. I pray for greater days ahead, oh God. Lord, bless now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless y'all tonight. Amen. Have a good evening and love Good night, everyone. God, God bless you, Mother Doyle. So happy to have you again. Bless you, Pat.